going to add a little bit to my comments about Mo Farah. The problem with very short form videos is that there isn't a lot of time to explain yourself. And a lot of people have pointed out that the story Mo Farah is now giving, again, you can find holes in it. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say you can always find holes in stories, even really truthful ones, if you come at them from the right angle. We all know that about uh, when we uh, see stuff that CNN are telling about, for instance, Trump, some of which are outright lies and others uh, finding holes in stories that don't really exist. So you have to be a little bit careful there. But it's quite possible uh, Farah is still lying. It's possible. It doesn't matter, though. That wasn't the point of my video. And some people got the missed the point so badly, I actually started to think that there was some sort of an effort uh, because my basic point of the video was to show the difference between Western civilization and uh, African and, and particularly Muslim civilizations. Sorry about that. I know there are many very honorable Muslims. I met a lot of them myself. And I know, <laughs> I know that everybody who is Muslim is not a nasty or evil or vicious person. However, the religion itself does sanction certain things that we in the West have grown past. And this is what I was trying to point out in my video. Not that Farrow was telling the truth or not telling the truth or whatever, but he was telling a story that made sense to him in the context in which he got to the country. There is very little doubt that as a nine-year-old child, he was brought here by people he didn't know. There is also no doubt that he didn't go to school between the ages of nine and 12. Now, the family who was supposed to be looking after him, they didn't, um, uh, they didn't send him to school and they were from his background and culture. And he was discovered by a teacher who, having heard his story, did uh, the, the, the right thing, the appropriate thing, and got this kid taken away from the family. Now, uh, there are questions. Why wasn't the family immediately prosecuted? Good question. Well, you might ask why the people in Telford and Rotherham weren't prosecuted or got off or nothing happened until there was a huge national stink about it. So I'll leave you to make your own conclusions about that. Apparently now, now that it's all come out, the family has more or less disappeared. And that's another thing that happens. Names change and become elastic. If you read a book by Robert Graves called, I think it's Goodbye to All That, he um, he records a time when he was teaching English at an Egyptian university and the names of the students in that university drove him. So the way people changed their names or had the same names, that, that sort of thing, uh, he, um, he couldn't... He couldn't be a teacher in in that in those circumstances, and he didn't last very long. So uh, a, anyway, uh, at least that's to my re recollection. It's a long time since uh, since I read that book, but um, it, it's something like that. All right. So back to Mo Farah. He describes a story of being brought to England as a slave, spending three years in slavery and being denied education, and then being uh, rescued and brought up properly, given some education, and, uh, and became a, a world-famous athlete. And this is uh, an amazing story. However true it is or not, it does record one thing, whether he came here illegally, legally, I, I can't, you can't say a nine-year-old child is an illegal immigrant if he's brought in by, uh, by criminals. And that's the problem. That's why we should control our borders, of course, more carefully. But, you know, he came in legally on forged documents with a, a legitimate family. You know, there are some things that are going to slip through the net. But the, the point is that having fetched up in this country, he then got the sort of chance that he would never have had in his own country if he'd have been enslaved in the same way in Somalia. There's no one to save him. He would have spent his life as a slave. 
there would have been no, depending on the amount of influence his family had, there would have been no way out for him. And I, I, the point of my video was to, was to say that all these people who think the West is such a terrible place, they can look at the story of Mo Farah, true or not, it reflects a reality. I think it probably is mostly true myself, but that, that's, that's something else. But it does reflect a reality of the difference between Britain and America and, and France and Germany and, and the, um, the mess that are m most Muslim societies at the moment. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it. Now, this is not... A, I got a very nice present from somebody. I have to thank you. Thank you very much from a subscriber. Uh, and, of course, I do ask if you can uh, contribute to this channel because this video is certainly not going to be on the monetization list, is it? Right. So, uh, I'm Granny Opterix. I, uh, please like, share and uh, subscribe to my channels, whichever ones you're watching it on. And check if you're on YouTube, the subscriptions drop. I noticed something interesting actually about my subscriptions when Elon Musk was trying to buy Twitter and he was inspecting them. Suddenly my subscriptions started going up really quickly. And then when Elon Musk dropped his bid for Twitter, my subscriptions started, stopped, they ground to a halt and then they started to reverse. Now, Call me an old conspiracy theorist, but I think there's some hanky-panky going on there. And I think when Musk was trying to get Twitter, they were, uh, they were, they released the brakes. And when Musk pulled out of that uh, deal, then the brakes are now back on. So I do ask you to check your subscriptions and share the video uh, to try and get my uh, subscription figures up some more. Uh, and, and remember, YouTube does drop the subscriptions, so you'll have to keep on doing it. Uh, okay, so that's like, share, subscribe, uh, support the channel if you can. As I said, thank you very much to those who have. And um, yeah, I think, uh, oh yes, yes, remember, if you want to know when I've uploaded a video, I am on Twitter, Gab and Parler, as at Granny Opterix. And you'll always find when I've, um, you'll always be notified on one of those channels. All right, that's it. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.